Few figures in history have attained the legendary status of pirate captains. Their names evoke images of adventure, plundered treasure, and freedom on the high seas. But as we sail through the waters of history, it's essential to discern fact from fiction and separate the genuine stories of these maritime leaders from the myths that have surrounded them. Pirate captains have long been the subjects of fascination, their lives romanticized and embellished by literature, art, and film. Yet beneath the veneer of eye patches, peg legs, and parrots, a more complex reality awaits discovery. In this voyage through history, we'll embark on a quest to uncover the true essence of pirate captains. My aim is to strip away the layers of myth and legend that have cloaked these figures for centuries, revealing the flesh and blood individuals who led crews of cutthroats on daring escapades across the seas. In doing so, we'll unearth the real lives, the motivations, and the challenges faced by these enigmatic characters whose names struck fear to the hearts of sailors around the world. The image of a pirate captain is an enduring one, complete with iconic elements like eye patches, peg legs, and parrots. While these features may seem purely the stuff of legends, there's a surprising historical basis for many of them. Sailors often found themselves in perilous situations at sea, and eye injuries were not uncommon. They were used to cover injured or lost eyes. Contrary to popular myths, they were only used for that, and there is zero historical evidence they were ever used to retain night vision. Similarly, peg legs were early prosthetics. Life at sea was fraught with danger, and accidents frequently led to the loss of limbs. Sailors who suffered such losses fashioned wooden peg legs as substitutes. However, it was in literature and pop culture that these features became emblematic of the pirate captain. Early novels and plays began to weave tales of swashbuckling pirates. These works often played up the drama of their characters with colorful descriptions, cementing the image of the pirate captain in the public's mind. One modern embodiment of this mythos is Captain Jack Sparrow, portrayed by Johnny Depp in the Pirates of the Caribbean film franchise. Captain Jack has become an iconic figure, known for his flamboyant personality, peculiar attire, and penchant for rum. He embodies the romanticized image of the pirate captain, unpredictable, cunning, and utterly charismatic. While Captain Jack Sparrow is a beloved figure, it's essential to recognize that he is a fictional creation, a larger-than-life amalgamation of the myths and legends that have accumulated around pirate captains over centuries. During the golden age of piracy, pirate captains existed as a diverse group, representing a wide spectrum of leadership styles and personalities. These leaders were complex individuals shaped by the harsh realities of life on the high seas. Pirate captains came from various backgrounds, reflecting the eclectic mix of their crews. Some were former sailors or privateers who turned to piracy, while others were forced into a life of plunder and piracy due to dire circumstances. This diversity among pirate leaders led to a range of leadership approaches. While popular culture often portrays pirate captains as charismatic rogues, the reality was more nuanced. Some pirate leaders were indeed charismatic, possessing the ability to inspire their crews with stirring speeches and a strong sense of camaraderie. They could sway their men through charm and charisma, rallying them for daring escapades and shared objectives. However, not all pirate captains fit this mold. The harsh conditions of pirate life sometimes pushed leaders to adopt brutal and ruthless methods to maintain control. The life of a pirate was fraught with danger, and leaders had to navigate a delicate balance between maintaining discipline and keeping their crews motivated. One unique aspect of pirate leadership was the practice of electing their captains. Pirate crews often operated under a form of democracy, where they elected their captain and other officers. This democratic process was a response to the oppressive conditions imposed by some unscrupulous captains in legitimate maritime roles. The elected leaders had to prove their worth through competence and fairness. They were responsible for decision-making, division of spoils, and maintaining discipline. This system of electing leaders fostered a sense of accountability and camaraderie among pirate crews, as they collectively determined their course of action. Pirate captains of the golden age of piracy held multifaceted roles and responsibilities that went beyond the romanticized image of swashbuckling adventurers. In reality, their duties encompass crucial aspects of managing a pirate crew and ensuring the success of their expeditions. A captain's leadership was contingent on their ability to align with the crew's objectives and maintain the crew's faith in their capabilities. Pirate captains often led the decision-making process by proposing potential targets for raids and strategies for attacks. 
The captain's role here was to propose an advocate for a course of action, taking into consideration the crew's preferences and concerns. The captain's tactical prowess and strategic thinking was highly valued, and their ability to propose successful targets influenced the crew's trust and loyalty. While the division of spoils was indeed a crucial aspect of pirate life, it was typically the responsibility of the quartermaster, not the captain. The quartermaster played a pivotal role in ensuring the equitable distribution of plunder. They negotiated agreements and settled disputes among the crew, striving to meet the crew's expectations while reserving a portion for the ship's maintenance and future expeditions. Captains would often have some influence in these negotiations, especially if they held a close working relationship with the quartermaster. A captain's mismanagement of this process could risk mutiny and discord among the crew. While pirate crews mostly voted toward making strategic decisions and dividing spoils, the dynamic shifted significantly when it came to battle. During combat, the role of the captain as the ultimate authority was unquestionable. The chaos and danger of a battle at sea demanded immediate and decisive action, and there was no room for debate or second guessing. In the midst of battle, the captain's orders were to be followed without hesitation. This hierarchy was not only crucial for maintaining discipline, but also for maximizing the crew's effectiveness in combat. Pirate captains were typically experienced sailors and skilled tacticians, and their knowledge was indispensable in navigating the complexities of naval engagements. Disobeying a captain's orders in the heat of battle could lead to catastrophic consequences. It could result in confusion among the crew, jeopardize the success of the raid, and ultimately put the lives of all on board at risk. For this reason, the captain's authority was upheld as an unwavering principle during combat situations, and, if a crew member disobeyed, death or marooning was a real possibility. While these pirate crews may have enjoyed a degree of democracy and shared decision-making in peacetime, the hierarchy and obedience to the captain's commands in battle were pivotal for their survival and success. The captain's leadership and expertise played a pivotal role in guiding the crew through the perils of sea battles and ensuring they emerged victorious. The popular image of a pirate captain often conjures up a swashbuckling figure with a flamboyant wardrobe. In fact, many pirates, in general, had a preference for dressing in a manner that mimicked the upper class. It helped pirates blend in with their prey, appearing as ordinary sailors or traders until the opportune moment, and it allowed them to seize valuable goods with ease. Pirate captains were known for their use of flags, symbols, and emblems to strike fear into the hearts of their targets. The infamous Jolly Roger, a black flag bearing a design meant to represent death was one of the most recognizable symbols of piracy. Raised as a signal of hostile intent, this flag communicated a clear message. Surrender or prepare to face the consequences. Pirate captains employed such symbols strategically to intimidate their adversaries and compel them to yield without resistance. Leading a crew of pirates during the golden age of piracy was a perilous undertaking fraught with numerous challenges and dangers that pirate captains had to contend with. One of the most immediate threats to pirate captains was the constant specter of being deposed. While the pirate system of voting for their leaders allowed for a degree of fairness and camaraderie, it also meant that captains had to maintain the respect and loyalty of their crew at all times. A captain who failed to meet the crew's expectations or made unpopular decisions risked being overthrown and marooned. The life expectancy of pirate leaders was notoriously brief. The dangers of piracy, including fierce battles, injuries sustained during raids, and the harsh conditions of life at sea took a toll on pirate captains. Many met violent ends, either in combat with naval forces or at the end of a hangman's noose. Pirate hunters and naval forces posed a constant threat to pirate captains and their crews. These dedicated law enforcement entities were tasked with capturing or eliminating pirates, and they employed various tactics to achieve their goals. Pirate captains had to be vigilant, adapting their strategies to evade capture and outsmart their pursuers. The relentless pursuit by well-armed naval vessels added to the stress and danger of life as a pirate leader. If you found this video interesting, please like, comment, and subscribe for more captivating pirate history content. A special thank you goes out to my Patreon top tier supporters, Patrick Chamberlain in 1660. Your support keeps the wind in our sails, propelling us to bring you more tales from the high seas. All Patreon supporters get to watch these episodes early and without ads, and the lowest tier costs just $3 per month. If you're inspired to contribute, you'll find links to Patreon and PayPal below. And for those who crave even more information about the golden age of piracy, don't forget to pre-order my upcoming book, Untamed Waters, on Amazon. 
The link is down below in the description.